Welcome to the Jax Rudolph Podcast. I'm your host, Jackson Rudolph, and this is episode 109, and we have got two guests on the show tonight. These were the last two men standing in the lightweight grand championship at the U.S. Capitol Classics. We're going to kick the show off by talking about that matchup as well as their other matchups and just kind of recapping the U.S. Capitol Classics, which was a wildly successful event. First time the event has happened in three years, so major shout out to Grandmaster Dennis Brown and his family for bringing the event back and making it what it was, despite fire alarms going off in the finals, despite a whole bunch of stuff uh, not, not quite going right with getting production going, that the event turned out great, and, and that is all credit to Grandmaster Brown, as well as a shout out to Maggie Messina and Female Fighters Matter 2 for the initiative to celebrate women and girls in the martial arts at the event from the demo that they opened the night show with to obviously for all the ladies that bonus prize money they were getting for winning. Uh, so many great things done by them and really a great opportunity to highlight those athletes. But that's enough of me running my mouth at the start of the show. We got Tyreek Saint. We got Bailey Murphy. If you're a sport karate fan, you know who these two guys are. They are two of the foremost fighters in the world today. And I'm going to give them a chance to introduce the, uh, themselves to you all a little bit. Uh, Ty, let's start with you, my man. How are you doing, Jackson? It's, I'm so happy to be on the show. Uh, if you guys don't know me, uh, I'm Tyreek Saint. Uh, you know, I'm from, I'm on top 10. I represent top 10 USA. I train out of Brooklyn, New York. Um, I'm from Benz VMA. And my instructor was Troy Benz. That's like all the things that you put down, like when you register for a karate tournament. <laughs> but, yeah, that's who I am. <laughs> uh, well, that works. And then, uh, so Bailey, introduce All right, yourself. What's up, guys? My name is uh, Bailey Murphy. Um, I'm from Hamden, Connecticut, and I'm on Team Straight Up. Um, I also run track. Um, I'm in college. One more year left. Almost done. Sweet. Love it. Well, thank you all both for taking the time to come on the show. It's uh, it's not every week that we're able to get two of the best in the world right now on the show together, especially since you guys are friends. We're going to have a lot of fun here tonight. And I want to start by addressing the reason that everybody's tuning into this show. And it's the fact that you guys had two great battles over the course of the weekend. One that everybody knows about being that lightweight overall grand championship. And then y'all also had that matchup in the open weight. We'll start with the one that everybody saw first, which is the lightweight overall. And first, I just want to get you guys' reactions to it, your perspective, how you felt it went. Uh, and we'll just kind of keep going in this order. Tyreek, so how did you feel uh, about that grand championship fight? Uh, so obviously as a competitor, um, as a competitor, I am not too happy with my results. You know, I got second place to none other than like one of the best in the world. You know, um, but other than that, like speaking about the fight itself, um, me personally, uh, me personally, I thought it was a, uh, like a really good fight, like uh, leading up from like the storyline kind of leading up to that lightweight overall. And um, he he fought me really, really well, you know, like barely, barely, in my opinion, I don't think he gets credit for like how smart he actually is. You know, like he um, he is super athletic, but he also got a brain on him as well. And in that second fight, even in that second fight, that second fight that we fought, it was a clear difference, you know. And it also like shows the kind of mindset that he had while fighting because he made an adjustment. He made an adjustment to an open weight fight that he won, you know. So I was I was super like I was super impressed, you know, um, like, of course, I wanted to win. But hats off to Bailey. Like he was the better, he was the better man. That, right. And and I love to hear that respect between opponents, right? Because it, it's so easy for for somebody after a loss to fall into that trap of just saying like, "Oh, I'll get him next time" or whatever. Uh, but to truly like appreciate, like, no, he made the adjustments. He got the better of me in that fight. Obviously, you still think you're going to go and win the next one, right? And, and just th that that show of respect is something that that's really admirable. And then, yeah, so and Bailey, although, yeah, go although, ahead, sorry, Ty. Oh wait, yeah, and although we like our friends, like we enjoy, like we enjoy like the chess match, you know, yeah, like I, I like I enjoy, like I genuinely, like I genuinely enjoy, like the chess match. Like honestly, like the athleticism, the 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 being able to kick really high, that doesn't too much fascinate me but the, just the idea of just the idea of the thinking throughout the fighting is really what fascinates me you know with the sport and like and we have chess matches every single time we fight 
I love that. And so now, Bailey, let's get your side of it, right? What were you seeing in that fight? 100%. I appreciate that, Ty. And uh, it's kind of the same thing. Like, people don't understand it, but Ty hopped on me in uh, the open weight fight. He hopped on me in 4 0. And like you said, I won that fight, but I still had to make those, uh, I still had to make adjustments in the lightweight fight, which I was, which I was able to do. And uh, like Ty said, I appreciate it. Um, it's, it's, I feel like it's even harder to make adjustments after a win. That's not, but that's not like a lot of people don't consider those things. Especially in a day's notice is crazy. Exactly. I come into them, <laughs> come into them with the mindset. Oh, I won. I'm just going to do the same thing, but that's not how, that's not how this works. Cause I know the type of um, fighter Ty is the level that he fights on. So I, I know that I had to uh, do something different. You know what I mean? So I had to be better that day. I love and that. You, just you to, always got to stay that one step ahead. Go ahead. Just Tom. to add on, uh, just to add on to what B is saying, and like if you think about it, like to a different extent, like me as a competitor, um, losing, uh, that open weight fight, I also like look to make adjustments, and Bailey made adjustments to the adjustments. <laughs> 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 so like it also shows like going back to the chess match that how many steps of that steps ahead you have to be a, like be ahead of somebody. Right. And it's obvious when you guys fight. That's one thing. Like, I feel like every time I commentate, I have to explain like those first 15, 20 seconds of a fight where mm -hmm. sure. A lot of the times you will get guys that come off the line right away. Right. But typically those first 15, 20 seconds are a little bit slower. And it's yeah. a lot of the fighters feeling each other yeah. out and kind of figuring out what's the other one planning to do this time. Because, you know, oh, yeah. if they're a good fighter. It's going to be a little different than what they did to you last time. And y'all both bring up the open weight fight. And I want to get some perspectives on that because that was one thing. I think I was sitting next to, uh, to Esteban Tremblay because he came by to watch the fights. And I was explaining, like, when Ty jumped out to that 4-0 lead, I was like, people don't get 4-0 leads on Bailey that quick, right? So, Bailey, we'll start with you on this one. You stayed incredibly calm, stuck to your game plan, made whatever adjustments. Put us inside your mind when you're sitting there down 4-0 in the open weight. Well, uh, that's the thing too. Uh, going down 4-0 on tie, that's not a that's not something easy. I feel like he has really really good defense, so I had to be critical with the things that I was doing and had to be efficient. You know, I couldn't go out there and uh, be emotional and just start throwing techniques because that 4-0 would turn to 10-0 really quick, right? Um, so for me, it was more of just staying with, sticking with a game plan. Uh, a lot of the points that I did get was when I did put Ty in the corner. And I kind of I kind of stuck with that. We had some judges that weren't very mobile. So nice. from my angles, even if I wasn't even if I wasn't scoring, I was still going forward, and all the judges could see is my back. If I'm going forward, and I'm not getting stopped. They're gonna uh, I'm more than likely gonna get that point every time. So that's kind of what I, what I stuck with. And then once it got close, I got one last point, and then I kind of just moved and stuck it out i think i believe i won by one point so and i love that perspective of thinking about the judges their positioning the way the judges are moving what do they look like they're calling not just in the fight but then the division i think that's another level of strategy that not everybody appreciates and now ty i want to get your perspective you had to be feeling good right up 4-0 that's hard to do against bailey so put us inside your mind now when you're sitting there up 4-0 um so I'm up for all, and honestly, honestly, the whole fight, the whole fight, it kind of like felt like a movie. Um, like it felt like a movie. I was like, honestly, I was just in the zone really. Um, during that whole open weight division, like I felt honestly the whole weekend, I felt really, really good. Um, and I feel like I'm actually starting to, you know, get back to my former self, like because I got injured not too long ago. Um, and I feel like I'm getting back to myself. But also having a 4-0 lead on Bailey, um, he, I, I think like when I got that 4-0 lead, you could kind of, you could kind of see it, um, you could kind of see like Bailey's strategy change, you know, like his strategy changed, and he went to literally the strategy uh, that he just pointed out, like being um, playing like angles really, you know, like and also like playing to what the judges wanted to see. If you look at it. Um, if you look at the fight in like two halves, like the first half being when I was up and then the second half, um, the second half of the fight, like Bailey was in, in control, like completely of that whole last fight. Uh, he was taken off. He was taken off. Whether he was hitting me or not, it doesn't matter. Like it's a point regardless, you know, whether he was hitting me or not. But 
the fight had a complete like shift. Like I was going forward and then in the second half he was going forward. So like that comeback was warranted because I just I literally just stopped. You know, I literally just stopped doing whatever whatever got me there. You know? So honestly like I I blame myself. Like I beat myself uh, up for that loss because I lost um I lost to Bailey like due to score, but I also felt like I lost to myself cuz I felt like I could have did more, you know? And I wanted and I wanted it and I'm not and I wanted it really bad, you know? I I wanted like I always want to win really bad cuz that's when I have the most fun. So <laughs> so usually I try my hardest. <laughs> yeah, yeah winning always good, right? Yeah. Uh, but you, you say something really interesting there that, that I want to touch on and whichever of you uh, thinks about this faster, you, you can just take, take the mic and answer it. But you, you mentioned Ty talking about how whether he was hitting or not, that's the way the points were going. And that's something that we do see in point fighting is that sometimes the aggressor, whoever attacks first, whether or not the punch actually hits ribs or hits chest pad or not, sometimes they will get those calls. So, yeah. As fighters, and again, I don't remember the specific clashes, what hit, what didn't, right? But as fighters, is that something that, does that ever frustrate you guys that like somebody cannot land but still get the call? Or is that something that you kind of accept as part of the game? Because as much as it might hurt you on some clashes, you can benefit from it too. How do each of you see that? Because that's, that's that's something that the average sport karate fan might not even realize is going on. Yeah, I feel like it's um, it's a, it's, I feel like it's a very, very fast game, right? Especially if it's a fight between Ty and myself. We're probably two of the fastest people in the world. So there's gonna be calls that if I I throw a body punch and it gets this close, they, they might call it right. Same thing with him. So we're the two of the fastest people in the world. So uh, that type of thing, those type of things happen. But I feel like it works in both of our strategies because if um, it, not even in our strategies, but if Say Ty and I are fighting, and let's see, I throw a body punch and say it doesn't score. Those are things that um, like he can't be mad about. He has to he has to do something different about it to change it, right? Same way if I'm fighting and I try to step in on somebody, and a judge that day is not calling a step in, I can't be mad that I'm gonna that I keep trying to step in. I have to do something yes. different as a fighter. You know what I mean? Like you can't be upset at what the judges are not calling. At the end of the day, those are the judges because you don't like one call. Doesn't mean they're gonna leave. They're gonna leave the match. You know what I mean, you got you have to deal with it. You got to figure out a way. And I feel like that's what um, that's how you know you're great. Like when you're able to win under any circumstance. I love that, Ty. You want to add anything? I think that was a that was an awesome question, by the way. And Thank man, you. you know, opened up a can of worms with that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think. Uh, I think that all your tools should, tools should be sharp for when you are for when you are put in a situation like that. But ultimately, ultimately, like uh, this is kind of the add on to what Bailey's saying. If you like, if you really think about it, we are in a way it's kind of like forms. Like we're just giving the judges what they want to see. If the judges don't want to see it, then don't throw it. You know, and honestly, like that's what um that's another reason why film study is extremely important. Shameless plug, we do film studies. <laughs> but uh yeah, but um like you we're just we're just doing what the judges wanted to see. Want to see. Like at the end of the day, that's all we go out there and do. If the judges don't want to see a step in, then don't throw a step in. Mm-hmm. Like, For sure. And, and I love that comparison to forms and weapons competitors because you hit the nail on the head. And I preach this on the podcast all the time. It's like people talk about things they don't like in forms and weapons. And I'm like, it's not on the competitors. It's on the judges. Because as long as the judges give the wins to the competitors doing whatever that thing is that you don't like, flash kicks to the corner, uh, Uh then it's not going to change. The competitors are going to keep doing what's going to win, right? But shifting gears, I know we're talking a lot about the matchups between you guys because they were great matchups. But I also want to give you a chance to speak to, as kind of a holistic Capital Classics recap, some of the other matchups that you had. Bailey, I know you had that fight with Cam. Ty, I know that you faced Tyson in the eliminations. Any other guys that you want to bring up? Bailey, we'll start with you first, breaking down some of the other matchups you enjoyed over the weekend. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, Fighting Cam, is, uh, that was for me, that, that's a big win. Um, uh, Cam has done a lot for me. He's done a lot for this sport. Um, and everybody knows since I came into the adult division since I was 16, 
he's had a couple of wins over me um, in different open weights and at different local tournaments. So uh, it was a good opportunity for us to fight again. Now I'm 21 years old and um, uh, just be able to get that win, you know. Yeah. That was good for me. Um, I didn't do so great at battle in open weight, so uh, it was good to take that too. Awesome. So that's a great quick overview of the cam fight. And then Tyreek, any fights that you want to highlight? Um, if I'm being honest, I had a lot of like my brackets were pretty my brackets were pretty tough throughout the whole like the whole weekend. Um, like if I was if I would be going like through the bracket, I fought Darren. Um I fought Darren Bryan. Like people of some some stature, no shade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I fought Darren, I fought Brian, um, and Tyson and Oscar. Um, but those fights, like as I said, really like I felt like I was in the zone, you know. Mm -hmm. Um Darren, uh Darren and I we've went back and forth. Uh, I beat him his first time in adults. Um and I remember he came up to me, he was like, he was like, Yo, you're my first fight in my in adults, I'm coming for you, you know, and that honestly like uh, Darren and I, like we cool, we cool because we used to hang out as when he was juniors and stuff like that. So it's also like just seeing that people stick with it. Um, Brian, uh, Brian's fight with Brian, the fight with Brian was pretty. He's he was pretty strong, you know. That was pretty much it, really. Like <laughs> he was just pretty strong. <laughs> Tyson's fight, Tyson's fight personally was a bit of a challenge for me. Um, Tyson is, I don't think Tyson gets the credit he deserves in terms of intelligence as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I felt like Tyson's, Tyson's intelligence is definitely like underlooked because he's a very, very smart fighter. Um, that fight, it went down to the wire. Um, a lot of good, a lot of good points. Like I remember watching the video back and there was some setups that there was some setups that, uh, that Ty, that Tyson would do. Um, and it's clear that, you know, he's thinking. You know, and, and as I said before, like, I really enjoy those chess matches. That's why I thrive. You know, Darren's fight as well. You know, Darren's fight as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I love you bringing up the I'm sorry. I'm sorry. that you had to get through. No, go ahead, Bailey. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, my, my I forgot to mention that as well. My fight with Tyson during open way, that was another good fight as well. I feel like that was a good fight, yeah. Fighting, uh, those high-level fighters uh, brings the best out of me as well. That's awesome. And, and, and I love you guys talking about how deep these brackets are because I'm going to shout out Inside Scoop with Alex and Jeff. They were talking about this in their show last night, which is like, as Alex says, th there's no cheeseburgers right now. Like there, there's no yeah. dudes that just show up and are going to get their faces beat in, right? Mm -hmm. Like literally the entire bracket is so deep right now and that makes it all the more impressive, whether it's open weight, the lightweight, especially the lightweights. You guys are so deep right now, right? Like it's crazy that the level of competition there is. And as we get into some of the other topics later in the show, I'm sure we're going to, you know, be name dropping some more uh, quick couple of name drops. I see some people jumping in the comments, Richard Osborne jr. Uh, he's tuning in. He says, keep carrying our sport. Well done. Both of you. That's a shout out to you guys. And then uh point mm -hmm. fighter live, Alex Reyes saying so much power, of course. Power, the podcast. Uh, so now I would like to, I would like to yeah, clarify ahead, really quick. It. I would like to clarify really quick. Um, I, uh, I like in terms of like the way I said Brian, like in terms of like how I spoke to him about a fighter, I felt like that was kind of disrespectful. I'm not gonna lie. Brian is an excellent fighter. Okay, I really enjoy watching Brian fight. I'm just saying like his like he plays um he plays what he has like really well and he's really strong. You know, especially since he's been fighting for a very long time. Like whether you wanna whether you wanna agree or not, like at a certain point, like your body does start to slow down. You know, and for him to and for people to be doing it as long as like as, for him to be doing it as long as he has been doing it, like it's extremely impressive. So like Brian, salute to you. <laughs> and I didn't think it was disrespectful. I thought you were just saying he hit hard. But anyway. Yeah, he, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Uh, so now we're going to move on. This is this is a new favorite segment on the show, and we're bringing it back because when I did it with Sammy Smith, we got a lot of positive comments about it. And so I hope you guys tuning in, go ahead, pop off in the comments about it now. This is the first ever Sport Karate Team Roulette Point Fighting Edition. The format, and I decided, I was trying to play with, am I just going to let Tyreek and Bailey play? Am I going to jump in? And I decided I can't play this game and resist. So we're all three going to do this. And you guys in the comments are going to vote on who's got the best team. The way we're building the team is going to be five athletes. 
You get four men, doesn't matter what weight class, doesn't matter. And then you get one lady warrior, one female fighter. And then for those of you that are new to watching Sport Karate Team Roulette, I have the hat here that is full of these folded up pieces of papers that have all-time sport karate teams, active teams today, teams from back in the day. Basically, when it's somebody's oh, turn, God. I'm going to pull a name out of the hat, and they've got to pick a fighter from that team, and they get the fighter during that phase of their career. So if I pull straight up and somebody says Raymond Daniels, they don't get Paul Mitchell Ray, they don't get All-Stars Ray, they get straight up Raymond Daniels, and nobody else can pick that human again. So if somebody got JPM after that, you couldn't pick JPM Ray because Raymond Daniels is already on somebody else's team. So a couple of little caveats to, to make it a little bit more fun. And then uh, I guess we'll start with the guest first. Let's make this. Tyreek's on my left, so I'm going to make Tyreek go first. All right. so I'm going to take a name out of the hat. And the team that Tyreek is picking from, ooh, you got National Karate. So from up in Minnesota, that whole okay. karate camp of fighters over the years. And I could choose a girl, right? I could choose. Yeah, absolutely. This, right. this can be your this, girl. All right. I could choose Katana, right? Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> all right. So Ty's no starting pick. off wrong. He's got Katana. And try to keep up with who's on your team because I want right, to remember. Man. Katana. So Ty's got Katana. All right. This is Bailey. Bailey's got. You got Diamond G3. New team. Oh. I'll take uh, I'll take Luis. Okay, nice, nice pick. So we got Luis Nunez for Bailey. We got Kitana for Ty, and now my pick. Let's see what I got here. I've got. I've got full circle. Uh, I mean no. Ross Levine, right? I'm taking Ross ah. Levine, so I got full That's circle Ross pick. Levine. Go pick. Going back to that. Good first round. Kitana. That was a, that was a great Chris first Nunez, round. Ross Levine. All right. So back to Ty. Your team is Team Legend. Team Legend. Give me <laughs> Give me Christian. Christian. Yeah, just won the heavyweight grant, right? Come on. Yeah, give me Christian. Give but me that's Christian. tough. They got a lot of good guys. That's yeah, a good yeah, pick. Yeah. Yeah, right. that's that's that's, that's, a, that's tough. All right, Bailey, you've got revolution. I gotta go on my boy Angel. Angel Diaz. I knew that was coming. Yeah, I knew that was coming. my boy Angel. Solid, solid. All right, let's see what I grab right here. I just realized full circle. I took. I could have taken Claire. I could have gotten my feet. Uh, yeah, exactly. I, I might have messed up. I might have messed yeah. up. I, I mean, you can't go wrong with Ross. Or Trevor. The Jason. Oh, too. or Trevor. You're right. Okay. Jason right. Good I'm happy with Ross. I'm gonna stand by that. I got next level for my next pick, uh, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna make sure I don't mess this up. I mean, you can't really mess it up. Yeah. I'm going Tyson. I'm going Tyson. <laughs> Easy pick. I'm taking Tyson. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I got I got Tyson and Ross Levine. I got, uh, yeah, go ahead, Ty. I got Katana and Christian. Yeah, and I got Luis and Angel. All right. So now Ty's next pick. And by the way, y'all pop off in the comments. If you get if you get this team, who are you putting on? So My Ty's team pick strong. is coming from Katana could fight. Dudes. Oh, Ty got lucky, bro. What I got? Trans World Oil. All right. Wait, 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 wait. You're going to have to fill me in. Wait, wait. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. You're going to have to help me out. All right, so Transworld Oil. We got K.A., Richard Plowden. Yeah. Like, this is old school. Yeah. I probably would know if I seen the uniform. but Anthony the name Price? Is... Anthony Price? I'm going to have to go with one of my favorite fighters of all time. I'm going to have to go with K.A. <sighs> See, I knew that. I, I, should, have, I, should have, I should have told him K.A. was on Transworld Oil. <laughs> I should have. Yo, my that. team is looking crazy. Yeah, that, that, that KA is a big swing. That sucks for us, Bailey. Nah, that's all right. Right. I'm going to get JPM right now. Bailey's next pick. Yo, if he called this, top 10 USA. Uh, okay, I, I got to get I gotta get my boy Ty. Ah. <laughs> there we go. All right, all right. So I, I, got, I got Ross. I got Tyson. And I'm looking pretty good. I need a, I need a legend if I'm going to fight with KA, though. 
We got top 10 time. Tyson, if you're tuning in, you want to share the ring with KA? Throw <laughs> Tyson in there, see what happens. All right, what we got? Oh, no, I grabbed two. I'm not going to load. Actually, I'm just going to put it back. That's my bad. Keep it fair. Fun. I'm not the, host, the host ain't going to cheat. <laughs> All right. Oh, now I got legend, and Christian's already gone, right? Yep. I'm scared that I'm not going to get another opportunity to get one of the great females. So part of me wants to go Cassandra. There's also Coca. There's Yolskar. Yeah. There's Oscar. Uh, there's Oscar. Oh, this is tough. But see, there's still, like, Chelsea's still around. Claire's still around. Ah, all right, I'm taking. You know what? I'm gonna show some senior love on the podcast tonight. Yeah, showing some senior love. We're taking Yulscar. Yeah. Shout out Yulscar. All right, so time. Oh wait, quick recap before we get to the next round. So I've got Ross Levine, Tyson Ray, and Yulscar Gomez. I got Katana, Christian, and Ka. Yo, it's looking crazy over here. I got Luis, Angel, and Ty. Now, your team looking crazy, too. You got me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, Ty, your next pick is coming from – you get another national karate fighter. Ty's loving the Minnesota fighters. Um, yeah. So um, Ahmed, Greg Betlock, Elias. Game, right? I'm going to take, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take a lot. Yeah. I'm going to take Elias. Elias, solid, solid, good pick. So Elias yeah. Lemon joining Team Tyreek. Bailey, you got – make sure I only grab one of these. Ooh, Hayabusa. Ooh. Sense Ooh. was on that too. Roman. I'm trying. To, oh, yeah. Brian, Roman. No, Roman. Yeah, Roman. Yeah, I was about to say, as soon as I pulled yeah. Hayabusa, I knew he was picking yeah. Roman, right? Definitely. Yeah. Roman, Hayabusa Roman was nasty. Yeah, Chico. sure. Chico. All right, let's see. I need I need a female fighter. I passed up on a female fighter just then. I need to get one. Give me JPM so I can take Chelsea Nash. Make it happen. Oh, Come on now. I should, have, I should have picked Elizabeth. Don't give him. Oh, you should have too. That's a good one too. All right, I got, I got Legend again, which is the universe telling me to take Cassandra. So I'm taking Cassandra. Cassandra de la Barrera. That's my fourth. So I recap, got I got Ross Levine. Tyson Ray, Cassandra, and Yoskar. Yo, that's a solid team. That is yeah, solid. That is, that's a crazy team. Yo, that's kind of scary. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I got Katana, um, Christian, K.A., and Elias Lemon. God, that's crazy. We, Luis, Angel, Ty, and Roman. Oh, so ba Bailey needs a female fighter this round. Yeah. Yep. All right. Yep. All right. All right. All right no, so Tyree, your one. last fighter is coming from team... JPM. Next level. Tyson Sagan. Give me. Give me JP. James Poor. Solid pick. JP. Solid pick. Wait. Right. Yeah, give me. Wait, wait, wait. Stop. Okay. Stop. Stop. <laughs> wait. Stop. Nah, 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 nah. Can You're I choose cool. Jesse? Uh, I mean, You're you. All right, I'm taking James. I'm taking James. No, take these back to you. I forgot. All right, now Bailey. Bailey needs a female. He needs a female fighter from Team Trans World Oil. So I know you're a history buff. I'm trying to think. Was that was Linda Denley? I think Christine was. Christine was for sure. Christine Banner Rodriguez. Yeah, she was on it. Christine was. Yep. All right, I'll get it. Man, all right, so Bailey just got real good taking Christine. All right, so I need I need a men's fighter. It's a crazy team. Come on, we haven't pulled JP in this whole show. We haven't pulled straight up either. Yeah, I know. Ty's team got pulled. Come on, what's up with that? I need to just put I I, I just got to start putting like four JPMs in this hat. So <laughs> all right, let's see. My last team is proper. Ooh, that's a good one. Ooh. That's a good one. That's a, you, got a, you got a lot of people to pick from. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. I think. Brian, Alex. There's Brian. There's Connor McGlinchey. Yeah. I yeah. also, it wouldn't have been bad yeah. to get female fighter this round, get Francesca. Yeah. She just won the Walker Worlds, right? Yeah. You can get Leon Jefferson too, though. 
Oh, you're right. Yeah, I, that's yeah, yeah. Old. Thank you, Bailey. Yeah, Take yeah. Leon Jefferson. Le- yeah. Leon Jefferson doesn't get enough respect when people talk about point I, I, I see yeah. it all the time. He's, a, he's, a, he's nice. Yeah. I love watching Leon Jefferson play. Okay. So that was it. That was a good round. We'll do one more recap so that anybody tuning in in the comments, y'all can y'all can decide. I mean, one of these teams have has KA and the other teams don't. So that, that says a lot. Uh, but my team recap, Ross Levine, Tyson Ray, Cassandra De La Barrera, Yoscar Gomez, and Leon Jefferson. My team, Katana, um, Katana Everett, uh, Christian Rivas, Elias Lemon, JP. And drum roll and Kevin Thompson. Uh, Luis Nunes, uh, Angel Diaz, Tyreek Saint, Roman Brundle, and Christine Bannon Rodriguez. That's solid. See, I That's think we, we, team we did. Team. It's solid. All, all three of these yeah. teams are solid. Yeah. We did yeah. We did Bailey a disservice by not giving him more all time teams, though. Like yeah. Metro All Stars was in the hat. Uh, yeah. There were several Conroy teams in the hat. CJB was in there. Like, Jeez, you should shake it up a little better. I know, right? Yeah, it's like, I got to. So Gabrielle's the one who folded these cards. I think she might have picked it. My only regret is uh, I should have picked Elizabeth over Roman, to be honest. Ooh, and gotten your female fighters in. Yeah, that's yeah. true. But, I mean, you wind up with Christine, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. But, but Roman can run up some points, though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, literally eight feet tall on a point. For <laughs> anyway, all right, so now we're uh, back to our regularly scheduled programming. If you guys enjoy uh, Sport Karate Team Roulette, I think it's something that I'm basically going to ask every guest who comes on the show, hey, do you want to play? And if they say yes, we're going to play the game. Um, so if you guys enjoy it, give me that feedback down in the comments, and we'll keep that thing rolling. But now we're getting into our uh, our normal topics of conversation. We've done our Cap Classics recap. We've had our fun. We've played our game. And, uh, you know, I want to go to, because I mentioned it on the broadcast, but not everybody knows this story. And what better way to tell the story than with the two of you sitting here, right? So there is the, I guess, famous story now, right? Of After yeah. the first time y'all fought, Bailey got the win, and then Ty had something to say to Bailey afterwards, right? So Ty, since you're the one with the quote, tell it from your perspective first, and then we'll hear Bailey's thoughts on that story. Um. Well, honestly, like, uh, when I'm in like when I'm at tournaments, I kind of like I kind of zone out a lot. But first, before I even tell the story, I want to start off with I used to travel. I used to travel with a four star Dragon Ball. Right. And nah. Bailey and Bailey and Bailey and even his instructor, they don't let me live it down. And nah. keep in mind, I had this four star Dragon Ball while I was traveling. While this, I was nah. this, 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 story, <laughs> this story might be crazier than the first time. He, he beat me at. Twin Towers when we were like 15 for open weight and Lee Ireland gave out money and my instructor made a joke. He said, what are you going to do? Go buy, you're going to go buy a Dragon Ball because we knew he liked anime. <laughs> he, said, he said, he said, no, I, I have it in my bag right now. <laughs> I didn't want it nowhere without that Dragon Ball. And he left, right, well, he right, left well, and to, got it and came back. Right. Um, so basically what happened was, um, like my instructor, like we normally, like we, we train four people and I don't, I never really actually knew who this person was like, uh, since while he was on impacts, he used to go all over the world traveling. Um, he used to, he even used to fight with Bailey. So it's, it was kind of like a, it was kind of like a pre seed planted. Like this dude is really, really good. And, um, They're and the thing is. Up. Is like we low key, low key, and um the thing is, is like locally, I was really good. Like I would not lose locally unless, like, unless like we fought, you know, like, and we've only fought one time locally, like prior. Um, but then we ended up. Uh, there was a time a, a tournament where I've been training mad long. Bailey doesn't even know who I am, right? And then he's just, I guess, I would, I would kind of say like it was an aura type of thing. Because I don't know why he felt like I mean Billy has a problem when you try to when you try to challenge him. Like he'll say some crazy things in the ring. So I'm guessing like it was one of those moments. But it was like it was like yo, like I'm not afraid of you. You feel me? So like it, I'm I kid you not. This is how her first fight went. Me just blitzing him, like chasing him down, trying to punch him, and I'm just getting stuck with sidekicks, and I'm literally like hitting Bailey late. Like, literally, we just scrapping. Like, I don't even know why I was so mad at this dude. Because of my instructor. I don't, I have no idea why I'm, why I'm so upset at this dude. But I'm 
trying to take his head off. Right. And and the thing is, I was also fighting with some sense. So it's, it's not like I was just like completely brain like like without thinking, just running at him, you know. So uh, what ended up happening was I realized during that fight, like. Like I was really upset, but I he he felt human to me, you know, like he like he felt like he was beatable. And then he came up to me. He was like, yo, like good fight. And I was like. I could beat you, yo. Like that you, part's wrong, bro. You, <laughs> that last part is wrong, bro. And then after, wait, say it again, B. I said that last part is wrong. Oh, the last part? Up, you came up to me and said, "Oh, oh, my fault." I remember what I remember is I was sitting down and I was crying. I remember I was sitting down and I was crying. Oh no! What happened was I was I was uh, disrespectful towards Bailey because I lost. And then um and then my instructor uh, my instructor he told me to like go up you know and i think i remember everything was a blur but what i feel like happened is that i walked up to him and then i said good fight but i could beat you or yeah. something like that along those lines right yeah yeah so yeah yeah that was it so we, so the whole tournament was kind of crazy uh i knew a couple people from high school already because at that time a lot of them were blitz kick people and the whole tournament, it kind of, I felt like something was coming. Oh, I was about to die. Give me a second. I'm not going to lie. But, uh, yeah. So I got there. At this point, especially locally, I did. It's actually my instructor's tournament, too. Right? Mm -hmm. It's my instructor's tournament. Locally, like Ty said, I didn't, I didn't lose. I didn't really lose either. So I was going to the tournament. It's in my hometown. I'm like, uh, this is just a, this is a, another day. And I was talking to one of the guys from their school. And. He was like, I think you got some competition today. And I was like, I said, oh, I hope so. I don't, I don't know. And then I ended up fighting Ty, and it was a good fight. And I remember I wasn't even on straight up or anything yet. And when they had got mm -hmm. there, I told Romani and Christian and all those guys. I was like, I, said, I didn't even see them fight, but I was like, I said, those guys are nice. Just be ready. Ah. I said, those guys are nice. Just be ready. And me and Ty had a good fight. We had a good fight. I think it was for first and second, right? Um, yeah, it was for first and, then, and second. Yeah. And then after I was sitting down, he came up to me. I dapped him up. He said, "Good fight," and he's like, "I could beat you." And then it's it's, it's the actually week, and then continue, continue. Week, yeah, the next week or two weeks later, I went to a tournament. And he beat my butt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was bad. Yeah, I I the, and and uh like you may have seen it on Billy's Instagram, but I still like I still have that trophy up in my room. Yeah, but it's not it's not really like. It's not really like to just like say that I beat you. It was really like that is kind of where my journey started. You know, that's like where my because honestly, like karate, Bailey can Bailey can um he can vouch like competition can get boring when you like beating up everybody all the time. You know, so like so like if if like if anything, I was probably on my way out. You know, I was probably like ready to pack it up, uh, move on to like a different sport. You feel me? But uh, Bailey was like he was somebody who who I can chase as well as get better with, because like it would like the the improvements, the improvements between tournaments, yeah, like like but like uh, there was a point there was a point where we were all like we were a little bit better than the competition. And then I feel like there was a point where we just kept going back and forth within making those adjustments. And then we were kind of like so like so much far ahead so much more further ahead than the people we were competing against and it would like get to a point where we were like kind of chopping down at the divisions and we would fight a lot it got honestly i'll say uh, i don't care it got to the point where uh in juniors unless i was fighting ty i was not competing honestly yep that's crazy that's crazy. And it shows like the way that you guys pushed each other and made each other better. And that's part of the beautiful story of this like friendly rivalry here. There was yeah. one part of the story that I want to pick up on where Ty said that Bailey, you'll chirp a little bit in the ring. In fact, he said, you'll say some crazy stuff, right? Can I get an example of one of you? Cause I want to know. Cause like on the outside, we're not hearing any of that. Right. Oh, so, man. I mean, can, can we get an example? What, what kind of talk is Bailey talking in the ring? I can't say those words yeah, in line. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it gets bad saying. Like sometimes I just I just zone out, especially because I'm super super competitive. So yeah. this is this is just an example. 
if I'm beating you zero to four, do not look at me crazy after the fight. Yeah. Ty knows on Ty knows on talking. Yeah. It's 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 okay. really just it's okay. really just passion. Yeah, yeah. It's that's, passion that's, and that's knowing really exactly good. how hard you work, you know. I understand. Mm-hmm. I understand. For sure. And I mean even and this is probably going to surprise a couple of fighters, but forms and weapons guys get that way too, especially yeah, after yeah. a dope form. I've totally said things that I regret coming off yeah, the mat yeah. after a dope form, right? Really? It's, oh yeah, of course, right? Yeah. Uh, there was one year I'll tell you guys a story because it's like it was never. <laughs> what's funny about what Ty said is it kind of sounds like Bailey might be using some Joe Greenhall vocabulary. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, but no, so I, I would never do that. Uh, but what I would do is like, there was one year, um, it was the U S open form and, uh, they played the wrong music or, well, it was the right track, but it wasn't the edited version. So that was the, that was like the first year that we had like the royalty free music for U S open for TV. And so we had to submit our, the song we were going to use first. And then later we had to submit the edited version for the form. And so this song had like two and a half minutes of like really slow stuff that I wasn't going to use at the beginning. And so the edit was like chopping all that off and getting to the fast part. Well, I cue my music and the slow part starts playing. Right. I would have been pissed. And so, oh yeah, it was terrible. But it's like in my head, because I'm pretty sure that year it was live. And so in my head, I'm like, well, our sport's going to look stupid if I'm just like, Hey, yo, that's the wrong song. Like we can't do this. Right. Mm -hmm. So my first strategy was I like bowed real slow and I was like, can I stall this out? Can I just like stall <laughs> till we get to the fast part? And then it became evident that no, this was going to be like two and a half minutes of the slow part. And Ooh. so I just had to go. So I just like went and everybody was probably confused as to why I picked that song. Right. But then like, I wasn't trying to lose the U S open. So I, yeah. I had this ridiculous idea. It literally came to my mind, like during my last trick and then emotion took over and I just did it. So I end my form, my key, I, and then I look at the judges and I go, that was with the wrong music too. And then yeah. I backed out of the ring, right? And yeah. it's one of those things where it's like, I That's feel fine. You. like if yeah. I was in my right mind, I never would have like yelled that at the yeah. end of my exactly. like, yeah, yeah. When you're out there and you're, and it's, it's a big moment. You're not yeah. in your right mind. You're somebody I'm else. Sure. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure. so, I'm sure. no, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, so now next, next thing. Oh, easy one next right so we, we've talked about this rivalry now i just want to i want to share because there's a lot of kids that tune in and watch the show young martial artists right just each of you give us a little peek inside what your training looks like how often you're training how often you're sparring rounds, doing drills diet stuff like that right ty we'll start with you on this one then go to bailey i kind of wanted to hear bailey's secrets <laughs> <laughs> nah uh, <laughs> um uh training for me um well honestly it always it always feels like i'm training um it always feels like i'm training or working out uh i now like i ride my bike to the karate school like as one of my workouts as well um but usually most of the times like it's uh if i'm not working out by myself i would be working out with uh shihan troy benz um he'll put me to the side or he'll give me some drills and then from there like it's either we'll work together, he'll watch and critique, um, or like he'll hold the pads for me, you know, or yeah, really. But other than that, I'm training every single day. It's kind of like it's kind of like just one of those things that is in my day to day. So it's not really too stressful, you know, yeah. like in terms of in terms of I know I have to train like so whether wh- however I'm feeling, I got to get it done. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I love that perspective. And then there was a little bit of strategy in me wanting Bailey to answer this one second. And it's only because of something that Joe Greenhall told me this weekend. So this weekend at the tournament, which by the way, Joe, Joe is always entertaining, but Mr. G was like particularly entertaining. Like Mallory and I were in the booth commentating and then Joe literally took a lime from his drink and threw it into the booth. While me and Mallory were like doing our thing. Did you, did you see me? Did you see me trying to distract you while you were in the booth? I don't remember Man, it now. I was trying so hard. <laughs> like, I would, I, like, I was, while you and Mallory were talking, I would, like, um, go in front of the camera and just, like, jumping and stuff. And you didn't see me? Nah, you, it's weird. When you commentate, you get, like, super tunnel vision. I did it, like, like five even, times. Like, I don't, even, <laughs> I don't even remember things that happen in people's forms sometimes because you're so focused on on saying it and telling the story about what's going on. Right. You don't actually process, process it, it, like, when you're just sitting there watching. Uh, but anyway, so the point that I was getting to with, with Mr. G 
is I was standing there. We were watching open weight, and it was in between your fights, Bailey. Yeah. And then, as Joe does, he just starts talking about Bailey, right? Yeah. And uh, he starts talking about, like, the way that you guys will train in the dojo. And he prefaced it by saying, like, this is the way that, like, you know, when, when great straight-up fighters would come in, this is what I would put them through. And the thing that impressed him so much was that apparently you'll just stand there and be like, more, more, give me more, more of that, more drills, more reps, whatever it is, right? And just the, the way that Mr. G talked about that was so compelling because you could tell that, like, it impressed him what your work ethic was like, right? I so I love Ty's perspective, which I think is real because I think that's like, you know, it's what we do. Like, you yeah. got to train, you go in and do it, you make it part of your daily routine. Nice. Uh, but then particularly with like Joe giving me that backstory, Bailey, tell us a little bit about what does Mr. G mean by that? Yeah. So it'll make a little more sense after I explain it to. Um, so a lot of people probably don't even know this, but I don't have a real, like I don't have a dojo anymore. I haven't had a dojo since I was 16. Um, I've been doing this on my own off of just the pure fact that I want to be the, the best at the best at this. Right. Um, so training for me, um, I have mats downstairs in my uh, basement. I have a um, wave master and stuff. So training for me is a lot of drills, obviously. And then I get to train with um, Angel Diaz and uh, Herbie Bagwell a lot of the time. But uh, when I do go to Mr. G's, which is maybe once a week, uh, I've actually been going a lot more recently. But, yeah, well, maybe a week. Uh, going there is a lot of fun, and that's why I, uh, I always ask for more because I'm making that drive uh, – I'm not getting to train with Brandon all the time. So when I'm there training with Brandon, training with Mr. G, I want to be there as long as I will, uh, as long as I possibly can and just get all the work that I can. And even with Ty, I mean, this summer, Ty and I have trained a good amount. He came over to my house um, back in June, be my friends in basketball. Then the next morning, the next morning we went and trained. We literally sparred for two hours straight. I'm not joking. That was mad fun. I love it. Not doing you know, we smart for two, two hours straight. Not there was not one break. Like we didn't do rounds. It was literally us sparring for two hours. That's dope. I love it. Yeah. You yeah. tell it when you guys fight because y'all's cardio is ridiculous. Yeah, all yeah. you fighting all those rounds, neither one of you slowing down a bit. That's one of the things that's most impressive that people don't realize. It is yeah. tiring to point fight. Like people don't realize yeah. how hard it is to fight. What maybe. 15 plus rounds a weekend if you're doing open weight in your division and you're winning and you're doing teams, right? Yeah, definitely. And then another thing, uh, like battle, I'm not going to lie. I, well, I run track, but during the summers, I play basketball almost every day. Like that's another cardio. It's a good car, cross training for me because I was telling Ty the same thing too. It's like you're still working on your full mm -hmm. your forward. You're doing that everything that are going to help improve like that, that fast muscle twitch and things that just help with point fighting in general. I think that's one of the things that like, um, uh, like that's one of the main things that I uh, took away from Bailey as well. Like him telling me to play basketball is probably also one of the best like things he ever told me. Cause um, like I was, I really, I know how to play basketball, but I wasn't really playing as much like as I, like as, as I used to. And I started to play basketball again. And it's just like, like it's a fun way to work on your cardio. You're doing like the same the same blitz footworks that you do to drive to the paint is the same like it's the yeah. same thing. Like it's like, all the same defense, thing. Yeah, yeah, side skip the same thing when like I'm side skipping and moving around the ring. It, I feel like it all comes full circle. It just works hand in hand. No. That's dope. I've never thought about that. That's crazy. Because yeah. I played at, I'm not saying that I was that good at basketball, but I, I played pickup games like all four years of college and I'd use it yeah. for cardio. In yeah. fact, funny story. I actually played a few pickup games with Ross Cook because oh, he was cool. doing he was doing research at Stanford, and so we would go and, and we would hoop at pickup games and stuff like that. But what that, that yeah. that's cool. I'm not gonna lie, that's fire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway, that's dope. I, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed in my Celtics this year. That's <laughs> dope. <laughs> yeah, you go. All right. So next one I got. So at the sportmarshalarts.com, they, they posted a video. I think they posted on Instagram. I don't know if they posted on Facebook or not. Uh, but it was this really cool video of like this behind the scenes of the two of you before you went on stage. And what was so cool about it was also seeing how different the two of you were, right? Because when the camera's on Bailey, it's like Bailey doesn't even know the camera's there, right? He's just like focused straight ahead. But then Ty, like you were a lot more relaxed, right? Like 
you like literally looked at the camera, you smiled, right? So tell us about, especially on stage, when you know that's under the bright lights, that's what's being streamed, that's what everybody's going to see. It's for the overall grand. Tell us about what's running through your minds before the fight ever happens. In, in that moment backstage and then walking up on stage before you even touch gloves. Tell us about that. Uh, well, all this, I'm gonna give you a little more backstory. All weekend, Ty kind of was fighting before me. So after every single one of his fights, he would come up to me and be like, I, cause we, after we fought an open one, you, we said, we said, let's do it again for the lightweight over, right? So after every single one of his fights, he came up to me and he said, I held up my end of the bargain, hold up yours. So he just kept saying that. And then before the nighttime show, we said, let's put on, let's put on the show. And for me, I, I was in a situation where uh, this is the last, this is be the last fight of the day. Um, and I'm trying to sweep the event, right? So that, that was my last fight. And that's why I was so tuned in, so focused and just thinking about sweeping the event. I had one more fight to win. So that's what I was tuned in on. And on, the, and on the opposite end, um, well, me personally, uh, I, I, I realized that I fight my best when I try not to like worry about it too much because honestly, I feel like I get really, really nervous before I fight, but I, I feel like when I'm on and when I'm, you know, when I'm training, when I am like at my best, uh, or like decent enough, I feel like I never really underperform really, you know, like I don't, so like I get really, really nervous, but when I get out there, like I can always, I can always depend on myself to show up, you know? So like, I try to be, I try to be just as charismatic. Like I'm just going to be me like all the way up until it's time for me to fight, you know? Um, Although it was like, although usually before Bailey and I fight, like we try to, like we try to distance ourselves, like really, like we try not to, like not to speak because we both got a job to do, you know, as he said before, like, as he said before, he's trying to, he's trying to sweep like he's trying to sweep this event and I'm trying to, and I'm also trying to win. Like I'm trying to go back to back as well, you know, cause I did win. Um, I didn't win the last caps, you know? So we were like, we, our wills kind of like just clashed, you know? We were our friends in that moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I love that perspective of like saying, like I get nervous before I fight. Cause I feel like there's a perception that like, champions aren't allowed to get nervous when that's just yeah. not true. You know what I'm saying? Like it, and there's, there's both ends of the spectrum. Like, like I was, I always struggled talking about nervousness because it was something that even when I was a kid, I just never felt like I was blessed to not deal with it for whatever reason. That's just how my brain was made. Mm. Uh, but it's like, that's a real thing. Cause like yeah. guys that I were, that I was competing against guys that have beat me before they would get crazy nervous. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, getting nervous doesn't mean that you can't be a winner. You can't be the best. It's just part of everybody's pregame thing. You know, some people get nervous, some people don't. And it's not something that's going to impede your ability to succeed. You just got to know how to deal with it and how to overcome it. Right. Sensei, uh, Sensei Java, um, shout out Sensei Java. Um, but he has this saying that stuck with me from, uh, from the first time he, like he told me, uh, and the saying is relax your nerves and win championships. So like, uh, like oftentimes, like oftentimes right before or when I feel myself getting nervous, that's exactly what I think about. And also, and also another thing was anime. Um, I'm not sure how many people watch Demon Slayer, but Demon Slayer was very like uh, focused on breathing, you know, um, breathing when it made you heal, like it made you heal faster, it made you stronger, it made you fa uh, like it made you faster in general. And I kind of like put those two, to two things together and that's kind of like, how I my like me personally like calm those nerves and just being myself like I'm not I'm not gonna be that talkative tie you know talking to everybody and then like before I'm about to fight I may speak to you less you know because I am getting slightly focused but I will still like interact with people right. you know I love that and by the way my wife Gabrielle is off screen celebrating the fact that you mentioned Demon Slayer she's a huge oh. Demon Slayer <laughs> Demon Slayer is awesome if you haven't <laughs> watched it you need to watch it.
<laughs> for sure. So now I want to move on to another fun one because, again, we've been talking a lot about you two guys against each other. We did take a moment in the Cap Classics recap to talk about your matchups with other fighters. But now I want to expand that, right? Because every fighter seems to have matchups that they just love to be in, whether it's a great challenge or the other guy they just think is a great guy and a great sportsman, right? So for each of you, who would who would you say your top three favorite fighters to fight on the circuit are right now? Again, it could be because they give you great fights, they challenge you, it could be because of the way they carry themselves. So who are some of your favorite fighters to fight? Uh, Ty, you were just talking, so Bailey, we'll go to you on this one. Oh, unless Bailey froze. Hold up. Bailey did freeze. Ty, get us started. I'll take care of Bailey. All right. So my top three people to fight. Oh, look, Bailey's back. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Oh, let him go. Yeah, I don't know. How I, I like I lagged out. <laughs> Who's your top three favorite fighters to fight or challenging you? Yeah, to fight? Yeah. Oh, uh, so uh, definitely Ty. As of late, Tyson, too. Uh, fighting Tyson, I feel like that's made me a better fighter. Um, the, like, the progression of Tyson from the first time I fought him at Diamond Nationals to um, Battle of Atlanta was crazy. Like I realized, like from Diamonds to then he he he's gotten on a different level. Like, and yeah, so fighting Tyson is definitely fun. And um, fighting out, fighting for me, obviously fighting Elijah is yeah. that's a that's a good one. Hell, I'd be at my best to fight him for sure. Cool. So that's three good ones. And then, Ty, what about your side? If I had to choose three fighters I enjoy fighting, uh, I'm not going to lie. I definitely agree, like, with the Tyson pick. Um, I haven't fought Tyson much. Actually, like, if we're talking about if we're talking about training as well, I fought Tyson in training, and I have, like, I have a great, like, I have a great time, like, fighting Tyson, you know? Yeah. Obviously, like, if I'm, if I'm, being like, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that because that's petty. I enjoy I enjoy fighting Tyson um because like the chess match uh, that's really what it goes boils down to. Um, Bailey would be my Bailey would be my second pick and my third pick would actually be my instructor. Mm -hmm. Um, and hear me out. So the reason why I say I really enjoy fighting my instructor is because um he is at that elite level. He is at that elite level. He's watched me. Um, he's watched me grow up. And your hardest fights are usually in the dojo, you know. So like the chess match, the chess match is to, is to a different extreme when you get to the dojo. So um, and we fought at a tournament as well. This is actually this is actually a crazy story. This is actually a crazy story. Um, so me uh trying to or starting to fight adults. I think I was like fourteen. Right, so to prep me, to prep me at the time, um, my sensei, uh, we went to a tournament. The tournament was in Long Island, you know, and um, we both decided to fight, right? So he fought in the 30 plus division and I fought in the 18 plus division. Um, I won my division, um, he wins his division, we get to runoffs, and now we're fighting for the grand, okay? So in the grand fight, um, in the grand fight, it's very anti climactic he spread me 7-0 7-0 crazy and then i remember um the next time i was training my butt off the next time um i was we went to another like long island event and when i tell you i was out for blood i was out for blood and this is and this is my like this is the person who like raised me you know but um like i was out for blood and then i ended up beating him in the second tournament and i think it was like eight two or something like that i didn't quite get the spread <laughs> and he still he still kind of taunts me about that but like honestly like he would definitely be up there in my top three i love that that's awesome and while we're doing countdowns this is something we bailey do you have a thought i saw you if, just if I, if I had a fourth if i had a fourth it would be enrique though i'll say that if i had a fourth it would be enrique just because he's so different than every other fighter you know what i mean and i feel like even like even if i like beat enrique pretty good it's like Every single point, I have like every single exchange, I have to be on point. You know, I would agree. Yeah, you can't agree. you can't take an exchange off against Enrique because, especially as a puncher, because that that four that four zero will turn into him being like six zero real quick off a of three. You know, what I mean, you can't take it. You can't take an exchange off. Yeah, 
And Enrique is weird. Enrique is probably the only person who blitzes with his feet. Yeah. I, it don't make it don't make no sense, but but he be blitzing. He be blitzing yeah. with his feet. It's really hard to deal with. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that's crazy. That's great. And we had Enrique on the show not too long ago. So for you guys, after you uh, after you tune into the show, uh, if you go to our YouTube channel, the Jacks Rudolph Podcast on YouTube, there's a full catalog of all the episodes. Uh, scroll back not too far, and then you'll see Enrique on there. But for, for you guys, we've been doing several top five countdowns on the last couple of shows, talking about greatest of all time, right? We had Matt Emig and Sammy Smith on the last two episodes. So we did some Nunchuck countdowns, some CMX Forms countdowns. So it's only appropriate if we do a top five fighters of all time while you guys are on the show. I'll start take a little bit of pressure off. And actually, I was just thinking about this because I have a bad habit as a host of not thinking about my questions before I say them. Um, but off the top of my head, I'm going to go Ray. And this is in order. I'm going to go Ray. I'm going to go Nasty Anderson. I'm going to go K.A. Pedro. And there's a little bit of fandom on this one that I've always loved Ross Levine. So I'm going Ross Levine at five, but that's close. I'm also thinking of like Jack. I'm also thinking of Trevor Nash. And there's probably somebody that I'm forgetting that's really obvious that y'all were revealing y'all's top fives. But take a little bit of pressure off, off the dome. That's what I would go with top five, subject to change. So if, if one of y'all's got a strong opinion, jump in and, and what's your top five at? I'm trying to think. This is a tough question. This is the toughest question you'll ask so far. Oh, Gary. Gary. I'm gonna have him start scoring the track. Um I'm sorry. Uh I'm sorry, guys. Um, you're good. You're good. Uh so I I'm explaining now, right? My you you got yours already? Uh, yeah, I I, I uh, go I'm for sure. it. Fire away, man. <laughs> All right, so my top five fighters of all time um and this is an order this is an uh actually I, this is an order this is an order um i would go ray and this is my personal opinion i'll go ray nasty jotty raymond daniels oh my god i forgot all right Raymond By Davis, the way, Nash Johnny Anderson. Holden could have been on my list. I give you that. Jody Tension. I got to say their full names because it deserves some respect. <laughs> Kevin Thompson. And this is a controversial one, but he is one of my – he's one of my favorite fighters, Ross Levine. I, I, I had Ross in my five. I, I, I'm a huge Ross Levine fan. I respect it. All right, Bailey. It's on you, my man. By the way, if you guys in the comments, don't be shy. Drop your top fives, too. We're having fun here. I love how hard Bailey's thinking about it. All right. All right. I got you. All right. So, for me, goes Ray, Jotty, um, Nasty, Zolt, and then, I mean, I have to say him. Growing up, this is my favorite fighter. Zolt is a good one. I'll say Jack. I feel like yeah. he's Probably, he, Jack is probably one of the most consistent point fighters of all time. So. And that's where I was so conflicted is I was trying to find space for Jack too. And then I love that you put some respect on my teammate's name, yeah, Zolt so Marotti, because there's man. another podcast that has another host that is speaking all kinds of blasphemy about yeah. Zolt Marotti all the time. Oh, yeah. Alex yeah. 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 Zolt, yeah. Zolt, man. I, I would yeah, put Zolt at six for me. Yeah. I mean, Zolt, like, being the greatest European fighter of all time has got to get you something, right? Yep. Like, yeah, anyway, sure. And again, I've also, like, anybody that watches the show knows that I'm a nerd, so I've got a soft side for history. So that's why, yeah. like, what, three of my five were old school, right? With yeah, K.A., yeah. Pedro, and Nasty, of course, right? So, anyway. But, yeah, like, every name that was said in this conversation, you can make an easy argument, belongs in that top five. Probably be easier if we split it between lightweights and heavyweights, like a lightweight yeah, top five, yeah. heavyweight top five. Probably, yeah, probably but anyway, not. that's always fun. We'll, we'll move on before anybody gets too mad about our top five. <laughs> uh, let's see. What do we got next? Oh, easy one. If, well, it's not, it's not easy to answer, but it's the logical next question. If you could get some rounds in with any of the fighters you just named, and actually some of them, I know, Bailey, you fought Jack, right? But yeah. let, let's pretend people, people you haven't fought, right? You fought Zoltair? 
No, 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 no. I, 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 fought Zolt. I got oh, Bailey fought Zolt. I, yeah. I'd love to hear that story. I know Tyreek fought Tomas because uh the, the kick. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I remember that kick hurt me when I saw that. Anyway, <laughs> that uh, but yeah, so like of of some of these top guys that we've been talking about, and also if one of you share one of your stories fighting one of them, like Bailey fighting Zolt or fighting Jack, uh, yeah. let's just talk about that. Yeah. Uh, so for me, uh, someone that I love to get rounds with is definitely Zolt. Um, uh, and fight. So I fought Zolt actually when I was fifteen at the Kumite Classics. It was there in te- it was, yeah, it was there in team fighting. So I, it was actually it was actually a good fight. Uh-huh. I mean, they're up a crazy amount of points. I mean, was that I, I, what, what was that? Cam Zolt Laszlo? Nah, I think who was it? It was. It was maybe Jo. Yeah, it was Cam Zolt. I don't think they had. Oh, don't lag out on us again, Bailey. No. <laughs> no. I guess I'm going to have to pick up the slack. Right, you're going to have to pick it up until Bailey comes back. All right, so I'll tell you guys about my uh, – Oh, wait. Bailey's back. Oh, right. I froze. What was the last thing you guys said? He does, he does it as, as soon as you start talking, Ty, Bailey unfreezes. Uh, yeah. So we heard you were trying to figure out who the team fight was, and you got out Cam. Uh, yeah, I, yeah I, I can't remember who the third was. I'm almost positive the third person wasn't on um, Paul Mitchell, though. I feel like they had a, a pickup team. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it was, a, it was a good fight. They they outplanted us by a whole bunch. Um, but me and Zoll had actually a really good fight. I believe, like, we we're tied up, but I don't, I don't count team fights and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, cool. Well, thanks for sharing that because that's a cool story. Yeah. I didn't know that y'all had had that fight, so that's cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. I had forgotten it, but yeah, cool. So, uh, any any fantasy like you didn't get to fight him, but you'd love to share some rounds with him. Right? Um, so let's see. Oh, well, without a question, <laughs> right? Without a question, um, the get some rounds on. I actually got some rounds with Johnny, me and Ty. Me and Ty both have, but Ray is someone I would definitely love to, um, you know, do some rounds mm-hmm. with. Yeah, I, I feel mean, like our styles right? are pretty similar. Yeah, I know, right? Our styles are pretty similar. So I feel like that would be a good, and I feel like he um, was a pioneer for what point fighting is today. So. I love that. And then, and then Ty, someone, that, someone, someone that wasn't on my list, um, look, I'd love to get some rounds in with Lazlo. Oh yeah, I've actually I've, fought I've him held bad for Laszlo, man. You blink yeah. and he's already hit you. It's crazy. Yeah, exactly. I've, I've actually fought cool. him a, a couple times, but that's someone that I'd love to. I wish like that's a great training partner for sure. Like that's yeah. someone I would love to train with all the time. For sure, that's yeah. a good one. And then Ty, I know you're gonna say Ray too, but aside from yeah. that, <laughs> nah, I'm actually I'm actually gonna switch it up. I'm I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you uh, all right. I'm gonna talk about like Jotty. Um, Specifically, like I mean, Jody is Jody is uh, excellent in terms of like, um, in terms of like being a, a training partner. You know, I mean, he is a beast. I, like I actually did get to move around with Jody, but before I even got to move around with Jody, when it was just like a dream, <laughs> like I remember I went to uh, his winter camp and there was a specific drill. Like then this was before I even figured out how he did this. He he was like a he was like some sort of god. When he did this to me, I was like, "Oh my gosh!" You talking about when he kept like, I, I was just, say it again. When he kept uh, switching, he, bro, he did the same. I remember that was the same winter camp we had when he just kept uh, like doing the drop thing. Yeah. So, yeah. so what happened was we were going over like a drill. Um, it was back. It was literally just back fist and counter body punch. It was back fist counter body punch, and I was like, "Yo, I got one of the best counter body punches in the game. I'm about to like go." And I'm a junior. I'm like 15. I'm like, I'm about to go. I'm about to test it out. And as soon as I went, like, as soon as I went there, we may have did, like, four backfists. Every backfist smacked me so convincingly. <laughs> like, when I tell you, like, he hit me, like, he hit me with down from his finger all the way, like, like, down. Yeah, and then he, had, he, like, the macho, he had the macho foam. The macho hand pads. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, when I, Jody, Jody was smacking me with backfists. Like, it was really, really bad. And then I remember, like, uh, like a few – Years later or whatever, I did get to train with um Sensei Jotty, and he is and Sensei Jotty's training is awesome. You know, he is probably one of the best people at explaining at explaining stuff. Um, and he he works really like he works you really really hard. You know, you you cannot get a sidekick on Jotty. You're gonna have to lock it out. Um, but like I fought also, um, like moving on from the the Jotty thing, I've also fought Ross at a tournament, and it was very very eye opening. 
um, because it was my first time fighting. Um, it was my first time fighting adults. Um, it was 15 at AKA. Um, it's when Team Blaze first came out. Um, I our team ended up making it to stage, and then how the matchups were was that uh, Sam Simeon, Sam Simeon, um, used to be on Victory. He fought uh, Willie, um, Avery, and uh, Sensei Troy fought, and I fought Ross. And it was like uh, I made I lost the fight. I lost the fight. I think it was like four one four two. Um, but it was a very eye opening like experience for me because I felt a step behind, you know, the whole time. And um, and honestly, like whatever points I got, it was probably share athleticism, you know, like and it was uh, like it, it from there. It was it was like a pivotal moment in my career as well. And it was my first event as an adult. Yeah, that was Warrior Cup 2017. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's crazy. So thank you guys for sharing both of those because those are all stories that I had heard before. And it's crazy talk about fighting Ross in your first Warrior Cup as an adult, because if we think about what Ross did in his first Warrior Cup as an adult, won both the weapons and the fighting Warrior Cup, which is the monster, bro. That's how that's how the dude got nine of them, which is like that's one record that people were like, you ever going to go for Ross's record? I was like, no, it's Ross Levine. Kidding me? Monster. Uh, bro. Yeah. Oh, I I, I saw this on uh, I think it was I think it was Avery on his uh, on his uh, Instagram page. Because y'all were talking so much about Jotty, it made me think about it. Did y'all see the clip he posted of Jotty doing the Karate Kid pose and then hitting the guy with the blue? <laughs> and, and, and he took off from deep. He took off from yeah, deep. Yeah, he was, he was across. He took deep. off across the road. That was a, <laughs> a three-point shot. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, that was dope. I think it was on Avery's story. So, Avery, if you're yeah. tuning in, you got to put that back up in your, on your story yeah. so people can go find it. That was yeah. cold. All right, so we just got a few more, few more questions. And we're going we're gonna to get – We've been having fun. We're going to get a little bit real with this next one because one thing that we do on the show all the time is we try to find ways to help sport karate get better, right? Oh, talking about good. ideas, talking about improvements, right? And so best, in my opinion, best person to ask is the athletes, right? What yeah, do yeah. you want to be better? And a lot of the discussion this year because of what happened before Chicago where there was new rules, everybody said it's too soon. So they got rid of a lot of the new rules. They kept some of the good ones, like the, the senior divisions and their ability to compete more places, that kind of thing. Um, and even some have still been like found their way into being implemented, like the out of bounds rule and stuff like that for NASCA. Um, so for each of you, what are, and you can also include stuff that you want them to keep things that they've done that you like. Um, but also what are some rules that you think need to be added or edited or, or however you want to put it, just ideas that you feel like would make fights more entertaining, more fair, more interesting, whatever the case may be. Uh, I, can, I, can go on a, I can go on a whole rant about this. <laughs> you got to be uh, careful what you say. You're going to lose them points. <laughs> well, I, nah, I'll be honest. Like, um, Ty and I have had these discussions, too. I feel like – Like uh, yesterday we had this discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In NASCAR, <laughs> I feel like in NASCAR right now they're doing some. Uh, I feel like with the point fine, they're trying to be something that they're not. Like with, with Waco – the whole out of bounds rule and the fall down rule and get a point to the other side. I feel like it makes sense over there overseas, but in NASCAR, it doesn't make sense because we're not fighting in seven by seven rings where it makes sense where if you go out of bounds, it should be a point to the other side. Um, and I feel like they did it for one tournament, which was battle. And then they have not done it again since. So it really is the consistency, right? Like I don't agree with it personally, but if you're going to do something, then you have to stay consistent with it. You know what I mean? Uh, I wasn't at U.S. Open. Uh, I was watching the stream though. They didn't do it there, and at D.C. they didn't they they, they didn't do that there as well. Um, and another thing for juniors, uh, well, and another, uh, I guess a lot. Uh, the whole the whole um, like if you yeah uh, what is it the equipment yeah, warnings? Uh, yeah, the equipment warnings. They normally they they've actually been consistent with that since um they started it. They weren't really heavy on it this past weekend. But one thing I do have to say for juniors, I don't think that should be a thing. Like mm-hmm. the the gear malfunctions because they're all they're already wearing a whole bunch of di- like whole bunch of gear like yeah. they're and wearing, they're wearing, they're wearing elbow pads but have to wear a face uh face protector. It doesn't really make sense where they're actually like protecting. Like you're not gonna get elbowed in the face if you have a face cage and then if someone's face cage comes off you shouldn't be getting the warning for that. Like that, those are uncontrollable things. You know what I mean? So it's just like it's little. It's things that can be fixed. Um, uh, 
And then personally, as a as a fighter, um, what would you do I, if I, somebody kept getting? Zay, what would you do? Like, what would you do if you like uh, punch somebody? I mean, what would you do if like uh, somebody got a gear malfunction, like a face cage a gear malfunction? You personally, like me, like, if if I was a junior right now and I got a gear mouth, well, Mr. G would be going crazy for me. It would be, right. would be throwing a fit. Like if Ty, if we were fighting in juniors and we both clash on a body punch, and my face cage comes down, I shouldn't be getting a a gear malfunction for that. Like I shouldn't get a warning for clashing with you. You know what I mean? I like I I don't agree with that personally. I don't know. Can but, I add um, on to that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, absolutely. Um. Uh, personally, like me, I'm a little bit less nice than Bailey, as you hear with the things that I say to him. Um, like me personally, I play to whatever the judges want to see. So if like, so if they lose a point every time I move their headgear, <laughs> then honestly, like I'm gonna grab their facial off their face. <laughs> like as a, like as a like as a junior, like as a junior, I'd punch you. And I'll find a way. Like I'll be doing drills. Like I drill like a bunch of random stuff, as you can tell. Like like I'll do a drill where I punch, and then the the glove flies off, so I can grab your face cage. Something, yeah, yeah. you know. Was, but like, yeah, if, I, if I was still a junior, I'd be wearing the finger gloves and just snatching faces. <laughs> snatching. <it off. laughs> I love that, and it's funny because you know we we've got a similar because you talk about like it's something that you can't do anything about. Like, yeah. if you have a clash, even if you score the point, but your face shield gets knocked off, like, you can't help that, right? Yeah. But it's the same thing in weapons. Because, like, there were a number of times that I break my bow. I can't yeah. help it. The bow just broke, right? It's not my fault that it broke. Yeah, exactly. There are people who get their hands too close together when they strike, and that'll make a bow break. Ooh. And maybe there were some times that that happened to me. But most of the time, when I was breaking a bow, it was just because I hit hard. And yeah. then you get disqualified for it. Like, it yeah, cost me a diamond ring. That cost like me a diamond forms, ring, a bow breaking on a strike. But I've actually never understood that. And I feel like a yeah. lot of times when you've broken your bow, you it's not like you stop, you continue. Like you'll mm-hmm. you'll come up with you'll be a martial artist and come up with something on the fly. You know what I mean? So I feel well, like that's, that's, like, that's one of my favorite you know things I mean? about you. Like, yeah. You might, you might as well make a cool video out of it if you're going to get sure. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> But no, I think that the difference is, and this is where I, I sympathize with the rule a little bit. Is I think that the, the goal, not the weapons rule, the weapons rule, get rid of that. Yeah. But in fighting, I think that part of it was to get rid of this phenomenon where, you know, fighters will be like, oh, wait, let me, you know, fix my glove, uh, fix my move just because I need to reset or I need to catch my breath or yeah. whatever. And I've um, actually, I actually think it's helped. I, I think it's helped. I feel like yeah. we've seen a lot, of, um, a lot of fighters doing less stuff or they won't call time or they're fixing their gloves or anything they need to fix, like, during the action. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right? So. I feel like it's definitely helped with with that for sure. I it's just with the juniors, I, I don't I don't really I don't think it's really fair. Mm-hmm. I see that. Yeah. So good discussion on some rules that are out there right now. Can Tyree, we, did you have another thought? Yeah. Yeah, I just want I want to specifically like speak about um like this is just another. I'm not gonna go into like because there's a lot of things behind the curtain um that like needs to be spoken about. But uh, two things actually. Um, one of them I'm gonna speak about is like the medic. Um, like the how the medic situation is handled. Um, I think personally that it could be like better. Like I think it should be like running time. Um, like, but also like if you kind of go the, if you want this to be a contact sport, you know, if somebody if somebody gets seriously hurt, then they probably shouldn't fight. But like saying the 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 sport that we do, you know, I think that it should just be like a two minutes, um, running time. You know, you get this amount of time. If you can't continue throughout this amount of time, then you should not be fighting. And um, and the thing is, is like people complain about like my teammate, like he he uh, he falls a lot or whatever. But like we only, only we only we only do what the we only do what the rules allow. Like yeah. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if you like make it running time, or even if you take out the medic, and um, I'm speaking about Enrique specifically or myself. Um, if y'all yeah, think I take medic timeouts, whatever. Um, but like, we just do what the rules allow, you know, uh, there's always, there will, there will, this is going to be a double negative, but there will never not, <laughs> there will not, never not be something to exploit, you know, yeah, in sports, sure. there will always be something to export, uh, exploit. And also like going, um, uh, going into like another thing, 
um, other than the medic thing is like arbitrations. Like if you really think about the way arbitrations are done, it's kind of it's kind of stupid. Like, <laughs> like, uh, like, no, 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 for real though, it, it, it's kind it of is. stupid. Like, there's three yeah. judges. There's three judges. There's whoever is the person arbitrating, and they get Larry from wherever the heck he at to to come, and then you guys just debate with Larry, and then he makes a he makes a decision off of the, those two like word of mouth. You know, I think to combat that or to like to make that better, we should like have a video like replay you know a video replay system Bailey and I were talking about this like one yeah. you get one you get one like the time um but the now playing devil's advocate the thing about that it may take too much time but yeah. think about all the time that people take with the medic timeouts yeah you know I, it's, it, I love this because fans of the show know I've said this in like 10 different episodes yeah. Yeah. that we need to have video replay for two reasons number one we need to have it for the broadcast. Every broadcast should have video replay because yeah. if you've never seen point fighting specifically before and you see two dudes run into each other, you've got no idea what just happened. Yeah, and so yeah, we yeah. need that to tell the story. And yeah. number two, I've said many times on the show, only in grants, right? I'll because you're right. If you do yeah. it throughout the entire division, it will kind of, and, it will take everything too takes too long, right? Yeah. Give the coach a challenge. Yeah, so you've got the video replay, that one clash that could change the fight, especially in overtime, right? You're trying to really decide who is it that hit first, right? Mm -hmm. Give them a challenge, and it adds to the entertainment value of the fight. Yeah. Like, think about how exciting it is when you're watching a football game and you're in those last two minutes. Well, I guess last two minutes, they can't throw a challenge flag, right? But you're in the fourth quarter, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's this challenge about, was it a touchdown? Was it not? Like, that's a huge part of the drama of the game, right? Now, yeah, basketball's yeah. got it. If we had video replay, we could do that. And I agree that I feel like oftentimes, whether it's Mr. Carnahan or whether it's Greg Root stepping in as the arbitrator, they're stepping in there because they have the rule book and they can reference exactly what the rule is. Right. But it would be so much better if they could have video right there that is like, hey, yourself. this isn't just the center ref telling you what happened. Yeah, exactly. This is what happened. So my rebuttal, my rebuttal um to that is like my rebuttal to that, honestly, like the 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 problem shouldn't even get to arbitration. Mm, right. Yeah. So now, like this, look, this is a segue into my next point. <laughs> you feel me? So, also another thing I think needs to change is that the judges need to be trained. And I think personally, the judges sh can't be promoters. You know, um, like I think per oh, promoters, whether or not they would like to, um, whether they want to admit it, like you want specific people at your events, and whether you know you're being like, there's there's a thing as like, um, like you can be accidentally biased. You know, like I, I like I wholeheartedly think you can be accidentally biased, but we also have like judges. We have judges as promoters. We have judges um, from way back in the day um, and the game has changed, you know, and people and I feel like the judges need to know exactly what they're looking at, you know, because um, and going back to like consistency, if all the judges are trained and know what they should be looking at, the rules don't change from ring to ring. You know, everybody yeah. needs to be informed. Everybody needs to be on the same page unless like no growth will happen. Like you go to one ring, you go to, you go to one ring, you go to one ring is two point. I'm not going to say this. It's always two point body kicks, but you go to one ring. Somebody's calling step-ins. Like you go to the other ring, you step in, you step in and you get, uh, you like the other person gets a point and yeah. you're fighting in a, and you're fighting in like a three by three ring, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. I like I think I think personally like I think that's where it starts really, um, like the judges the judges have to know what they're looking at so we can give them a better show, you know we're just we're just there to give the judges what they want, you know and if going like relating it to basketball, right people uh say that the NBA has gotten softer, right but the 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 NBA has gotten softer because the refs allow less contact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right about that. And I, and I think I, I love your point about how long term, I don't think that promoters should be judges either because a promoter's role should be a promoter. In the short term, I do think that sport karate is an, every, you know, everybody's in this together effort where it's like, yeah. if we didn't have those 10 promoters say at a tournament, 
those 10 promoters are the center referees running those rings and making sure yeah. that this stuff happens the way it's supposed to. Right. right. So I think right now it's next to impossible to do it, but I agree long-term promoters have enough of a job just being promoters. Right. And yeah, I, I definitely mean. think that they should be able to do just that. And I think we have to change the culture of how judges are selected. Like yeah, I was going yeah. through TikTok the other day and I came across this random account. There's like, boot camps like professional boot camps that get run where people can be trained to be a basketball referee right whether it's like aau rules to go ref the aau games i'm sure the nba has some type of a program for that right but it's it's also looked at as like a hobby that people enjoy yeah, exactly like refereeing could be just as fun like just as fun as fighting like there's some people yeah, there's some exactly. people who don't have like who don't have the skill but they can like they can they can be like they can get a euphoric feeling from judging these high level fights. You know, like I don't want to be like I don't want to be the person to mess this up and I want to make sure I call this right, you know? Like shout I feel Nick like I, say it again. Go ahead. Shout out, shout out Nick Kane. Yo, I was just about to say yeah, that. Yo, yeah, Nick, yeah. you shout need to Nick start King. this, yo. You need to start yeah, this snake. Yeah, for sure. Yep. I love it. And uh, like I'm just gonna add on. I think uh, to uh, to help the judges, I feel like there should be so most rings have three judges, right? I feel like there should be a fourth judge that sits at the table with the the scorekeeper and stuff like that. So he's mm. he's judging from outside, not that he's scoring or anything, but he's another he's another set of eyes. Yeah, like he he could be the arbitrator, and then judges rotate. You know, all the judges. That's I mean, that's how they do it in the locker. All the judges rotate, and they just all have an opportunity to see the fight from a different perspective. I feel right. like there's this. I feel like there's this pride thing happening. You know, yeah, where, yeah. You know where there's this pride thing happening where in NASCAR we're in like a we're in like a limbo state where they are trying to choose whether they want to adopt the Waco rules like all of them or like not adopt it. And that's just, this is just my opinion. As I said again, like this is just my opinion. But honestly, I feel like we should stay NASCAR. You yeah. know, like we should like like we should like of course all all you really want to do is you want to take the good things and you want to bring it over. You feel, you feel me? Like you just want to take the good things, keep keep the good things that, that kept it going. Because NASCAR is like, um, like the energy in a Na at a NASCAR event does not beat the it's energy at a Wasco uh, yeah. at a Wasco at a uh, at a uh, at a Waco <laughs> event. You know, and I like I really enjoy, yeah, I, I really I enjoy it. the energy. Like we don't we don't need to we don't need to completely change over. You feel me? And I feel like I feel like we're in that we're in that um that in between state. Where they're just gonna choose, like they have to choose. Mm, for sure, I think great perspectives all around. I know we're starting to run pretty long on this yeah. show, but I mean that—that that is the exact type of conversations that we want to have on this show because I know for a fact that there's people in positions of power that see these conversations and it has made an impact. Like conversations like this about creative forms over a year ago is what started some of the drive to like make some positive change in creative forms. And sure, the first draft's never going to be the perfect draft, but I do think that, that things are moving in the right direction in a lot of different departments. And so since I've kind of chimed in a little bit of forms and weapons perspective throughout, I got one last fun question and then we'll get out of here. And, and it's, I, I'm always intrigued when I talk to fighters about this because like before I started commentating a lot, fighters were always surprised that I knew anything about what they did. Right. Yeah. But like people just didn't know that I'm like a huge fan of point yeah, fighting. Sure. I love watching point fighting. I tell people all the time, I would rather watch men's team fights than watch forms and weapons runoffs. Because when what? I watch forms and weapons, I get too critical. Because I, yeah. I just sit there and I watch it, and I'm like, eh, you know, I've, you know, I've seen this. You're still in comp right? competitor mode a little bit, yeah. right? Exactly. <laughs> but like when I when I watch like team fighting, like that's my favorite thing to watch in the whole tournament is team fighting, right? And the open weight, the open weights. Anyway, but hey, I love watching yeah. point fighting. Is what I'm, yes, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you a, a funny story. I've actually known. I've always known that you've been a fan. There's one time backstage at New England Open. I can't remember who you we were talking to, but um, uh. You were talking about Jalen Carr, and you were telling somebody, "Yeah, that that kid's good." Like he, like you, I feel like you've always known your stuff. I, I've noticed that. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate yeah. that, man. Yeah, yes, so, and Jalen Carr, he was bad. Jalen yeah, Carr was good. bad, and people forget Jalen. They don't need to. Jalen was nice, man. Yeah, nice. Yeah, nice. Jalen was nice, yo. <laughs> so, my my question is, is like, I'm a forms and weapons guy that knows fighting, right? So, yeah. when you guys as fighters 
see some of the forms and weapon stuff at tournaments? And this is kind of a multi-part question. Answer whichever part of it you want to. I don't care, right? So who are some of the guys that you watch do forms and weapons that you're impressed by, that you're a fan of, that you enjoy? And also maybe some like pet peeves of like stuff that you see us do. And you're like, I don't know why y'all are doing that with something like that, right? <laughs> Let me so, start this one. Let me start this yeah, one. Yeah, go for it. We have the same answer. Yo, Jackson, you are indeed my favorite Forbes competitor. Thanks, so, man. I and uh, I'm like, I, honestly, I really enjoy like watching you and uh, Rashad. Mm -hmm. Um, I I like watching you and Rashad because Rashad is honestly, honestly, I really do feel like I feel like you are creative. Um, no, uh, no offense because honestly, I'm a person, I'm outside looking in, but like, I think Rashad personally is like mad creative. Oh yeah. Like, like he is like, he, I like, I'll be watching, um, his, his Facebook videos or whatever. And they be jokes. They be jokes or whatever. I'll be thinking they jokey jokes. And then mm -hmm. how, why is he swinging? Like, why is he swinging a broom in a, like <laughs> at a tournament right now? <laughs> like I think I, I think he is like he's awesome. Like he's um you and Rashad are definitely my favorite forms competitors. I love like I love how well you you are able to improv as well. It feels like it feels like an actual show, you know, and that's that's really what I like. You guys are entertainers, you know, you guys go to win your division, but you guys could put on a show. Thank you. After Bailey goes, I got a story for you, and I'm gonna give Rashad some respect because you're hundred percent right. Uh, but, and thank you for the kind words. But, Bailey, I'll let you go first, and I'll, I'll end by sharing my little Rashad story. Yeah, 100%. Um, just to add on uh, to what Ty said, you guys are both very, very versatile. Uh, and I feel like that that's important. You guys can really do it all. And then another person um, is Mason Stahl. Mm -hmm. I, I, like, I like, yeah, I like Mason a lot. I mean, he's doing his thing right now. Um, and he's oh, he's completely, completely tra transitioned to uh, traditional – but he was a beast that uh like the musical and creative stuff as well. So uh, that's another person that I know that's versatile, right? Yeah. You're talking to the president of the Mason Stowell fan club. Right? Yeah. So, ah, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I shout his, I shout his praises yeah. on this show all the time. Yeah, yeah. So to going back too. to going back to y'all's point about Rashad. So and this is gonna this is gonna make me sound old, but I guess in karate years I am at this point. Um, so Rashad is is relatively new to the scene from yeah. the fans' perspective, right? Yeah. But Rashad's been like coming yeah. to tournament competing against me since I was a kid, right? And so Rashad is like that classic story of the guy who never gave up, kept waiting for his moment, and now in the adult division, he's getting those moments. And so what's what's funny about the whole creativity thing, because I'm gonna speak to Rashad's creativity, is that it's almost like now I feel like people don't realize some of the stuff that I did when I was 14, right? Mm. So like, if you look at a sport karate tournament now, right? And you see everybody throwing the bow up and doing two spins, catching it behind the back, throwing the bow up, doing three spins. You see everybody trying to spin the bow on their finger. You see everybody trying to yeah. catch the bow like that, right? I and, think I even uh, tried it. Throw, throwing the bow around the body, trying to catch it on the other side, right? And those were things that like, those were some of the reasons that I got on JPM was yeah. when I was 14, I came up into that division. I was winning as a 13 year old and Austin Crane was dominating weapons when I came up into 14, 17. And I had to make up stuff that people hadn't seen before if I wanted right. to be competitive, so, right? And so that's what I did. And so it's crazy, like back then, like I, the, the move that you were talking about, Tyreek, I named that the Chris Angel because mm -hmm. people literally didn't know how it happened. It was a magic trick to them. Like right. I had to, I had to go and teach people how to do it. And it's really not that difficult of a move. People just hadn't seen it before. Right. And so all of that is to say, so like now when people look at my videos and they look at the kids today, they're like, well, what, what makes him different? I'm like, cause I'm the guy that made that, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, so I say that just to set up some praise for Rashad, because yeah. now that I've given you that background on me, I mean it when I say that I've never seen something before, right? right? Like if I haven't seen something before, that's high praise. And Rashad at Caps this weekend, he dropped on stage doing his double bow form. He went on improv with single bow. And then the thing he did, we call it a circus, where he rolls the bow up his chest, shoots off the shoulder, and then he took both his hands and he clapped his hands together he on the end it. of the bow. Fire. 
I had never seen that before. Never right. even crossed right. my mind. Right. Never right. seen anything like that. So like th that is the highest praise for me as a weapons competitor is when you do something that I've never seen anybody do. And Rashad did that at Caps. So that's why I, I give Rashad a ton of respect. He deserves all the fanfare that he gets. And he's a fan favorite because he's not afraid to take those risks and go yeah. the extra mile yeah. to put on a show and perform for people. And at the end of the day, and this is a great point to end the show on, that's what this is all about. Like yeah, for sure. this, all, everything we do. Yes. Every single athlete that's at the top wants to win. We talked about how winning is fun, but you don't get remembered for winning. You get remembered for leaving an impact on people for entertaining people and for showing people the upper limits of what can be done in this activity. Right. Yeah. And that's true in point fighting. That's true in forms. That's true in weapons. Like we are in the business of, we, we don't get famous. We don't make a lot of money doing this. We do this because we love it and we do it to leave a legacy amongst the people that share this love for sport karate. Right. Um, so anyway, that's, that's my two cents, but yeah, thank you guys both for the kind words. You might just be saying that I'm your favorite because you're on my show. No. Uh, but definitely Rashad deserves that praise too. Mason Stowell as well. And, and watch out for yeah. Mason Bumba. He coming up too. Yeah, it's another one. Showing love for the teammate, of course. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, again, showing love all around. And I also, I asked that question on purpose too because I wanted to show the other fans that you guys know your forms of weapon stuff too, right? Yeah. I, I wanted to give everybody a taste of that. But anyway, yeah. thank you guys both so much for taking the time to come on the show tonight. Any closing thoughts from either of you? Um, PFP. Uh, so, Ty and I, we are professional uh, point fighting. Uh, make sure you guys tune in. You can follow us on Instagram. Uh, we do a, a class every Sunday. Not this Sunday, though, but we do a class every Sunday. Um, got film studies on Wednesday. Those are free for everyone. So let's make sure you tune in. That's cool. That, that, I mean, that's really it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so absolutely. Anybody tuning in, like young kids, parents of young kids, even just adults that want to sharpen their skills, both of these guys, we've talked about each of their IQs throughout the show tonight. So definitely check out any training opportunities that you see with them. Also, you can DM either of them, reach out, private lessons, seminars, they do it all. Highly recommend both of these dudes. Great role models, great point fighting minds. You want them in your school. You want them working with your kids. Uh, so absolutely can't can't say enough good things about the two of you. And thank you again for taking the time to come on the show. Thank you to everybody tuning in for sharing uh, your Thursday night with us. If you're just tuning in at the end, make sure you rewind this thing, go back and watch it. All kinds of gold, talking about rules, telling stories, playing sport karate team roulette. We've had a ton of fun tonight. This has been episode 109 of the Jackson Rudolph podcast. I'm your host, Jackson Rudolph, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. See you.